have. For the girl that killed him last week. And you knew it. You knew there was a shark out there. <laughs> you knew it was dangerous. But you let people go swimming anyway. Over the years, there have been um, many young men, particularly, not as much, not as many women, but mostly young men who have felt that passion and fascination for uh, the movie that you do. In fact, one group of young men came up from Florida one year and interviewed people, and they had a TV. Um, video camera and they came to a uh, play that I had direct that I had directed and I invited them to come and afterwards they of course wanted to interview me and this group of young men knew every frame of the movie do you almost every almost. frame they knew every single frame and they had made themselves a 45 minute version of the movie called All That Jaws. Oh, we know those guys. Yeah, we know that. Do you know them? I've seen the movie All That Jaws. It's you have. Very I fun. have it. Yeah. It is. It, it's. It's pretty good. You know. It, yeah. yeah. How'd you meet? How'd you meet them? Same way we all met. There's a, a Jaws internet site. Oh. And there's a chat or a forum where you can post messages and everyone talks back and forth. Do you remember the person that played you, the one that slapped him silly, who started bleeding and everything? No, I didn't know that. It's hilarious. I know that I. Uh, uh, they made me, sl the young man who had played the Roy Scheider part was there, and I had to stand there and slap him, for the record. I would yeah. get a <laughs> What? Wh which one uh, is going to offer their cheek? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, tell me, what is the fascination for you? I have my theories about this movie, but what is your fascination? I mean, I know I'm the one that's supposed to be in, being interviewed, but I'm, I really am fascinated by what it is that fascinates you all. Just the whole idea of being alive, I think that speaks to some very basic instinct that people have. I think that's why the movie was so effective, uh, just on a very basic. As soon as you see that poster, you know what it is. I had a little three-year-old girl who was living with me uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, her mom would come to say with me, and as soon as she saw that shark, she knew what it was. She was scared to death. You know, you don't even, and I got our way from it, but it's just, it speaks to a very basic thing in your head, and I yeah. think uh, I because Spielberg did such a great job he did. with the hu human side of it, you know, and real yes. people mm -hmm. dealing with the real nature problem like that, mm -hmm. it's just very effective. <laughs> 25 years later. Um, my, I've got a couple of theories as well. One of them is that the shark represents the unconscious. And uh, we're often afraid of what's in our unconscious. We're afraid it's evil or something, and we, we sort of shy away from what we don't know. Um, so that's one of my theories. And one, my most recent theory is I'm a, a director and a teacher of drama, both adults and children, but mostly children. And we have a summer program. We do um, original musicals and include fairy tales. So uh, over 25 years or so, it's, I've, we've done a lot of fairy tales. And there are certain formulas for the fairy tales that you'll find in fairy tales from around the world. Uh, one of them is the trickster, which you may have, if you know fairy tales. Another one is the three daughters. And then there's the three sons. A lot of three sons fairy tales. And the oldest son is the intellectual and uh, tries to figure things out intellectually and uh, doesn't think with his heart. And so when somebody comes along who would help him, he says, go away, go away. Um, the middle son is the drinker and the lover of food and... Um, the what? The indulger. The indulger, yes. And he also uh, ignores the help that could be offered. The third son is either just the third son.
who's been kind of held down, down all his life, or he is like the fool, the bumbling one, who goes out, but he, he's all heart. And he helps the person who will help him, or the eagle, the raven, the wolf, whatever. And he gets, he succeeds in the struggle where the others have failed, or gotten eaten, or turned into rock, or whatever. And so, Richard Dreyfus is, I see him as the intellectual eldest son. And Quint as the lover of food and drink, the indulger, and good old Captain Brody, who is scared to death of water and has never been in a boat in his life, absolutely terrified, succeeds where the others have failed. So that was my most recent uh, thought. There's my uh, fairy tale lecture for today. Fairy Tales 101, huh? <laughs> okay, Richard. Yeah. All right, let's start the list. Let's start firing away. Okay. Um, can you tell us how you came to be involved in the movie? You met Virginia po Poole, I believe. And I had known Virginia Poole, uh, and she had known of my former work in theater. And so she told me to go down to the Kelly house and uh, get my picture taken and, you know, apply. And I said, there's nothing for me. I'd, I'd read the book, and I did not see anything in the book that would be appropriate for myself. She said, oh, come on, Lee, go down anyway. So I did and met Shari Rhodes, who was the casting director, and sat in a room with her and three uh, of the island gentlemen who were all quite taken with Shari Rhodes because she is, uh, was, is, a very attractive young woman from Texas. And I felt like a klutz, I have to tell you. What am I doing sitting here with these guys? So I got out of there as quickly as I could. And to my surprise, about a month later, I guess, time, you know, it's been 26 years, I got a call from Shari saying that um, Steven Spielberg would like to uh, audition me. I said, for what? And she said, for the part of Mrs. Kintner. I said, Mrs. Kintner? Okay. So I went down uh, to the Kelly house and uh, met Steve Spielberg, who is a dear person. At least he was then. I don't know what he's like now. I haven't seen him for 26 years. But he was really fun to work with and a uh, great sense of humor, very uh, understated sense of humor. Uh, he said, now, what I want you to do is to improvise a scene on the beach where your son wants to go into the water and you tell him you can't, he can't go because He's been in too long, and Shari will play your son. So we started in, and she tried uphill and down Dale to get me to persuade, to uh, let her go in the water, and I wouldn't. Finally, Steve stopped us and said, Lee, you got to let her go in, or we don't have any movie. Um, so... That was that, and I had not been uh, involved in theater for quite a while because I gave it up. It, I had studied theater for many years and had been in a repertory company, been off, off Broadway in New York in summer stock. However, I gave it up when I had uh, small children and uh, tore it out of my heart, uh, excepting for teaching, and I did teach a lot of theater. Uh, so I, I wasn't all that keen on Jaws or Universal City Studio at the time. I was very busy uh, teaching childbirth education and raising my children. And then I did get interested. I mean, I'd auditioned and I thought, gee, you know, what's going to happen? And I'd bump into Ginny and say, 
do you know anything? And she'd say, no. But she did, apparently. But it wasn't her place to um, tell. And then, I don't know, three weeks, a month after that, they called me up and asked me if I would play the role. So I went down and got my part. And... Um, I I uh, wasn't happy about having to say four letter words. Um, and so I said I didn't want to play the part after all. And um, they looked at it, and um, they also felt that the scene, they being, I think, the producers, because I don't think, I don't, know, I don't know if Steve was on the island at the time, I think they also felt that the scene would not be as strong because there'd been a preceding scene where uh, some guys had been swearing at this supposed shark and so forth. So um, they did change it. And um, which I was happy for, <laughs> and so I played it. That was the slapping scene. I'm talking about the slapping scene. So the swearing was directed at uh, Roy Scheider's character. I think? No, uh, I don't know. Oh gosh, I can't remember the. I know it was partly directed at that uh, shark, but. I guess it was directed at Roy Scheider's character as well, both the shark and Roy Scheider's character. Because in the book, if you've read the book, she uh, goes into the um, Chief Brody's office with a rolled up newspaper and starts swatting him with it and swearing at him. What scene was shot first, that or the beat scene? It went backwards. There had been a middle scene, which was not, uh, which was. It was cut, although I did see it in one version, one of the very early video versions. Um, they shot the slapping scene, the, the dock scene first, and then the middle scene, which took place outside the town hall, where she had just posted the notice, the $3,000 notice. And uh, I came out of the town hall doors looking dazed and saying where's daddy where's the car and went off in that direction and Robert Shaw came in we we crossed each other but they cut that out there is a story on me but I I don't think I would want it to be in the documentary but I'm perfectly willing to tell you all the story look at Jennifer <laughs> okay. So when it was the last thing you shot was the beach part then? Huh? Yes. We had to wait for warmer weather. And actually the day that we shot, it was warm because all of the uh, tech people were stripping off their shirts and just plunging into the water. Whereas the great big scene, the 4th of July scene, which they filmed later, uh, it was freezing cold. And they could, they hardly had enough extras to really make it count because it was very cold. You referred to that scene as the slapping scene, which is what we. That's what call everybody it. calls it. Right. It's the dock scene. It's the confrontation scene. Uh, whatever. And so the question on everyone's mind here is, how many takes did you have to do slapping Roy? Schein? In one day, seventeen. Poor man. Because, first of all, they had to take a wide-angle shot of the entire uh, neighborhood to see, make sure that everything would, would fit, would tally. Then they took a medium close-up of the two of us. And then they started taking close-ups. Uh, over the camera over Steve, of uh, Roy's shoulder to me, and vice versa. 
And then, uh, yeah, that's about it. One, two, three, four. And um, so we had to go over it and over it. Uh, for whatever reason, I don't know. Once I hit, well, you, you probably read it in People magazine, I hit him in such a way that it knocked his glasses off, and I came out of character and said, oh, I'm so sorry. And Steve said, don't be sorry, it was wonderful. But they couldn't, they couldn't uh, duplicate it, and I'm, the poor man's, uh, you know, when your glasses get knocked off, it hits you in the nose, so... Um, 17 times, yep. And then a few days later they call, or a week and a half or so later, they called me back because they were not satisfied with the uh, shots of him with the camera over my shoulder. So we did three or four, I guess, more takes. When uh, Steve and I, um, we went, when he finally had, was getting ready to shoot the scene, because he had all these other sh scenes on the dock to shoot, he took me uh, w away aside. Uh, we were sitting on a stone wall of some kind, cement wall, and he said, um, you can either say what's in the script, or if you can think of something else you wish to say, you can do that. Uh, as it turned out, I don't have the script anymore, so I'm not sure. Uh, I think I stuck pretty close to the script. I don't think I did improvise. Um, Virginia Poole told us that um, the crew, everyone watching, was, was so moved by your performance that they actually applauded uh, after one take. Is that true? Is that yes, it is true. For an actor, that must be great gratification. It was sweet. It was very, I was very surprised. You know, it, I never expected it. Um, and it was the first take, I guess. Uh, it's a quiet scene, as you know. And everybody just was, everybody was really quiet, even the birds. Uh, and Richard Dreyfus was very, very dear. He came up to me afterwards, and uh, he, I, I hadn't even known that he was around. But he came up to me a as I was walking off, and um, after the word cut had come, and he came up and put his hands on my shoulders and said, oh, that was wonderful. And I thought that was really nice of him. Who was your, your on-screen dad? I mean, he's uncredited, but we're curious. About his him. name is was Norton. I, I'm sorry to say, I think it was John. There are many Nortons on the island. It's an old island name. And he was a very sweet person. And he was a Justice of the Peace at the time, down in Edgartown. Has since died. A lot of wonderful people have died who were in that film. Want to talk about your little little reunion with uh, Jeffrey Voorhees at the wharf? <laughs> he talked about that a little bit. Oh, uh, a friend of mine uh, and I went to dinner at the wharf pub before our chorus rehearsal, which was down the street at the Federated Church. And we sat down and got our menus, and uh, she said, Oh, look, an Alex Kintner sandwich. And I said, Alex Kintner, oh, what do you know? That was my son in Jaws. Uh, well, of course, she knew that or she wouldn't have mentioned it, but that was my son, I said. And this, dear, uh, <laughs> this voice said, your son? Well, uh, then you're my mother. And I looked at this totally unrecognizable person, and it turned out to be Jeff, because I hadn't seen him in person since that day. And we were uh, delighted to see each other, and he very sweetly and graciously uh, gave us our dinner uh, on the house. He said, I, I have to treat my mother. <laughs> so it was really nice to see him again. I wouldn't have recognized him. 
he looks quite different. But then he was a kid. Did you happen to eat the sandwich in question? I didn't. I think it was a meat sandwich, and I don't eat meat. Fish. Was it fish? Just with red peppers. <laughs> oh, I should have had it. It's kind of mustard. I'll have to have one. I think there's two uh. recommendations here. She oh, yeah. had it. She got it. <laughs> Did you? Was it good? All right. <laughs> she was thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. Well, I guess this is a no-brainer, this question. Are you proud of your uh, participation in job? Yes, I'm very uh, grateful that although in the beginning, I didn't give it as much credence as I did once I got involved. Uh, somehow it didn't seem real or something to me. But once I got involved, it was, it was great fun. Very exciting, scary. I remember walking, uh, driving down to Edgartown at 6.30 in the morning the first day, <clears throat> and seeing people going about their business, and my heart's pounding, because I hadn't acted in uh, 12 years, perhaps, and um, I saw these people going about their daily lives and th thinking, oh, oh, I, w I sort of wish I was one of you. You know, and uh, they didn't use me the first day. I just sort of sat around in my black outfit, um, which, by the way, was very difficult to find on the island because back in 1974, people weren't wearing black. People, mostly people don't wear black to funerals nowadays. But Steve had this set idea that it should be black, and I think he was right for both the shark and me to be black. Um, that's supposed to be funny, guys. <laughs> I had to think about that. I, I can't laugh, so I'll shake my camera. Okay. <laughs> well, we were the only two in the movie that were, you know, I wore black and the shark was black. Uh, so after you shot your third scene on the beach, did you come back for more just watching and observing of the production? I did a little bit, yes. And of course I was fascinated, utterly fascinated. I got totally caught and captivated by the whole thing, yes. And the people were so nice. Um, Bill Butler, who was the first AD, was really nice. Uh, all the costumers, uh, everybody was wonderful. They had a film editor, I wish I could remember her name, strong lady. Verna Fields. Verna Fields, of course. Oh, she was so strong. And she had to be, I think, because she had to, somehow she, sometimes she had to be the one to make the decisions to put something, and I watched her <coughs> cut some things, put them on the, on the cutting room floor, as they say. Um, but people were gracious and, and nice, um, made all of us, and I'm sure the main actors too, feel uh, comfortable, encouraged, um, talented, everything. You know, there was no negativity, none of that, some of that kind of thing that you see in movies where people get hysterical and. <laughs> There was none of that. It was calm and dignified and gracious and really nice. During the time of that, uh, the slapping scene and all the takes, there was one uh, point where Steve took me aside and said, Lee, it's getting a bit stale. And I know he said something or we did something together about that, because it was all right after that, but I don't remember what it was. I just remember him saying that. Um, in all kindness and, and sweetness. The beach scene, uh, I mean, I got s 
so intrigued and then I mean theater and acting has been my profession since I was eight or I wanted it to be when I was eight it wasn't so when we shot the beach scene and I had to go down through that crowd of people and stand I was hoping for more takes you know because it was fun I loved it one take a wind came I clapped the hat to my head because of the wind and the seagull cried and as far as Steve was concerned that was it uh, I think it's a remarkable film you know it's tight it's as you all have said it's extremely real I think Steve was a, a, a brilliant young director and has, as we have all know, matured into a, a really, really fine director. But Jaws was, was a wonderful film because it had humor, it had heart, it had uh, terror, but it wasn't like the movies that are made today where it's just, you know. Uh, it was it was extremely tasteful, I think, and I'm very proud to have been a part of it. I still do I still do think it's rather amazing that um, so much is being made of it after 25 years. M maybe because it was the first summer blockbuster. I don't know. You know, maybe because of some of the things you've said, the the things that I've said. Uh, it's uh, kind of awesome that it that it lasts but it like a good book it lasts and I imagine that Jaws in fact will last uh, it's one of those ones that will last you know so I thank you Steve Spielberg and uh, for the experience of of it and it's been very sweet meeting a lot of people over the years who uh, who are so enthusiastic about it and they're all dear people even the ones who have called up from uh, England to say hello after the BBC thing young man from Cornwall who runs an inn called up so it's uh, it's been a, an and I think one thing for me is that uh, I do theater on the island and have done theater on the island since then. I went back into theater right after Jaws. Uh, whether Jaws was responsible for that, I'm not sure. However, it happened. And the people on the island um, do, because of Jaws, recognize me. I. I feel very grateful, and I thank you all.